right, everyone, welcome to the CB vlog. If you guys are liking these videos, go ahead and hit subscribe down below. Uh, if you're loving them, check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash commandersbrew. Consider donating a buck or so, and uh, you can help uh, make these videos even better for the future. But let's get into this week's topic. What do you think, uh, what do you want to talk about? Well, uh, last time we talked about removal in a creature-focused way. So let's expand the topic. Let's cover everything else. The removal that is non-creature-based. Removal Part 2, Electric Boogaloo. Yeah, one of my biggest pet peeves about things, sequels, is that everyone uses Electric Boogaloo as a thing. And, like, why? Why? Why is Electric Boogaloo sticks so so much in people's minds? I think because they're f it's the word boogaloo is so fun to say. It is uh, fun to say. There's no question about that. I think that was the, f I mean, as far as I know, that was one of the or first movies to like give the subtitle name like a full, huge name on the poster or whatever. I can't I can't think of another example. I think it was just ridiculous. I, well, I mean. I guess I, the the Empire Strikes Back was just the the title of the movie back then. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't actually say Star call Wars it. Two. Yeah, but like Star Wars Two, Star Trek Two, The Wrath of Khan. Oh yeah, that was a famous one. Like I think lots, I, I think lots of movies did that. But Electric Boogaloo, I think, was just like, what does that mean? It That's has nothing. never those words. You you hear them once and they <laughs> never leave your brain. Yeah, yeah, they never make any sense. <laughs> um, but that's what this is. You're right. Uh, removal part two. That's true, though. The non-creature removal discussion. Right. Uh, and then one thing we want to clarify. So last time we talked about creature removal. Now we're talking about every other kind of removal. Uh, last time I made a statement saying that I only want instant speed. I don't care about sorcery speed. And I want to clarify that was for my creature removal. Uh, because creatures... People were very good at pointing this out of the notes. Creatures attack you and you must have an instant to deal with creatures attacking you you can't like that is that is by definition in the instant time of the game so that's why cre creatures are the most dangerous during your opponent's combat steps but other removal spells i am flexible enough that if it deals with enchantments artifacts lands planeswalkers any of the other permanent types I'm okay with it being sorcery if it's very efficient or very flexible because those permanents we can usually wait until things if we need to. Uh, yeah, Dreadbore came up, I think, briefly, and that dealing with that was like the first targeted removal spell that also hit planeswalkers, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, like, if that's in there for planeswalkers, fine. But as far as creatures, it's not good enough, in my opinion. I mean, there's still, I mean, you still have a heroic intervention that does it at instant speed. So, anyways, yeah. Um, yeah. But you're so not gaining what, it so much from that, which I think was the point, though, yeah. Yeah, and so, so when we're only talking about creatures, sure, I, I'm going to, personally, I'm going to make a hard stance. It's got to be instant. But when we're increasing flexibility, when we're dealing with the other permanent types, other things matter. So there's four other permanent types besides creatures. There's artifacts, enchantments, planeswalkers, and lands. And we're going to spend a second on each type of permanent and like how we approach removal for those things and the kinds of things we think about and maybe some things you could be thinking about too yeah so obviously starting with removal we're talking about all these other things we want flexibility right you want to be able to hit as many things as you can and last time we did talk about uh some of the ones that do hit all permanents or usually actually it's non-land permanents so lands are usually the odd odd man out there but you'll you, you'll be able to find a few spells that hit uh, creatures, which we're not really talking about, but artifacts, enchantments, as well as planeswalkers, like we said, non-land permanents. Your utter ends, your, uh, um, uh, what's it called? Anguished. Anguished unmaking. Anguished unmaking, thank you. Um, uh, status statue now, the statue yep, side. That's a good one, yeah. Um, and and uh, um, something that came up uh, um, on some other podcasts recently, they are talking about a card like Putrefy, or I think I, I thought of Mortify, which is kind of like the enchantment version of that. The reason you're seeing that card pop up a lot is because it's it's got some flexibility to it, right? It can also hit an artifact as well as a creature. So creature, yeah, uh, yeah very important to get some flexibility there. Uh, there there aren't that many that hit all the ones hit all these things. So the ones that do are really good. Like Vindicate was good because it just hit any permanent, right? You can even hit a land with that one. Right, right. Yeah. We can compare that to uh, Assassin's Trophy, the newly printed, mm -hmm. that, that also hits any permanent. Yeah, very good. Yeah, absolutely. 
Great. So let's talk. So so one. There's lots of cards that destroy artifacts. We're going to talk about artifacts first. Artifacts and removal. Artifacts are an interesting permanent type because many decks, I would say, most if not all of their artifacts are for the purpose of ramp. Uh, if you're some sort of like, you know, maybe there's swift foot boots, maybe there's lightning greaves in there to help give your commander hexproof or protection or haste. But for the most part, you don't necessarily want to spend a card on every single one of your opponent's artifacts <laughs> uh, because a lot of them are just ramp and it's not worth spending a card to slow them down by a mana. Yeah, um, which is why when we talk about uh, artifact removal, mass removal is very important. We all know how good Vandal Blast can be because it hits um, it hits those mana ramp cards. Uh, not only not only is it a bore, uh, one-sided wrath of artifacts, it hits it hits mana, it hits everything else. Uh, yeah, it's interesting to talk about that. Like I, in those terms, like I think you're right. On average, uh, artifacts are mostly going to show up in the form of mana rocks. Mm -hmm. uh, in the in the average deck, I, I'd say like fifty percent of artifacts you find are are mana related, and then the other fifty percent are like do whatever do whatever else they do. It's it um it like that. Those numbers might be skewed, but it that that's what it that's what it feels like, right? So most of the time you're going to be seeing mana rocks, which you're right are not really worth the pointed removal, but some of them really are worth that pointed removal. Some really you know some big ones. Some key artifacts that are going to be key to a specific uh, game plan or style, um, but a lot of times you're going to see those cards in s dedicated artifact decks, which is what gives uh, cards like Vandal Blast uh, an even more value. Because if you can hit those decks, or if like qu equipment, for example, like if you're facing off an equipment deck, <laughs> our friend Butler can attest to the fact that I think the most times I've played Vandal Blast has been against his Daxos. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah equipment deck it's all equipment and he's just been blown out by it and he's like well i'm, I'm in very big trouble I, it's very hard for me to win now you've, you've destroyed eight of my equipment and like i got no cards in hand yeah like in just yeah i think i want to emphasize the point you made there like if a deck is all about voltron they probably have lots of equipment to make that go and you're going to want to mass removal most of it. It's it's not really useful to knock off one sword off of a suited up Voltron commander because it's still going to do brutal things. Like you need to get rid of more than just one. Um, again, it's why Vandal Blast is like yeah, that. That card is unparalleled. That, that there is no there's nothing like it. Like if the creature version that destroys all creatures that aren't yours costs nine. And this one costs five. Yeah. It's another reason why um, the green uh, elemental that comes down and gets the number of plus one plus one counters for artifacts and enchantments, right? Uh, I want to say it starts with a B. Bane of Progress. Bane of Progress. Thank you, Sean. Yeah. Bane of Progress is really good because it is it is a mass effect, right? Like, I, you know, we're talking mass versus pointed, uh, like, again here. Um, uh, mass effect obviously going to give you uh, more of a... Um, more card advantage that way, but also deal with the, the it in a more meaningful, in a more meaningful way. Whereas, like if you're killing one creature, that creature could be the difference between life and death. Uh, and it's it's like it's less likely to be true when you're dealing with like equipment or if a person has a bunch of like if they have an artifact based deck. Like removing one artifact might not have the you know the type of large impact you're looking for. Yeah. So to close up artifacts, I think we're saying mass versus spot is preferred. In most cases, but but um, I uh, but I would I would uh, say that like a card like we said earlier that is really flexible for hitting everything, like yeah. um, an acidic slime. That's yeah. that's worth it because it can hit many things, and actually being on a creature makes it recurrable and makes it really good. Yeah, so I mean I mean we'll tie it all up at the end, but yeah. like as as you say, like I don't have room for one card of artifact point removal, but I have room for a couple of point removals and i'll want those to be as flexible as possible to cover the gaps yeah uh yeah great let's go to enchantments um now enchantments i feel like unlike artifacts i feel like every enchantment that i see is probably going to be really strong and is going to do really powerful things in the deck that runs it and i probably want to deal with it before it generates too much value yes absolutely and i think this is a case where look i think in all of these cases 
mass is just going to be better than single pointed removal. I think that's just but, from a card advantage, right? Point just from of a view. card advantage point of view, that's that's the truth. And you run your bane of progresses and so on and so forth. But I don't see a lot of people running like uh, par- parse parcelain or what is the name of that card? Parasailing. Or is that, how, just is back, that what it's back called? To, yeah, I don't know what it... I know that there's a card called Parasailing. I don't know what it does. Parasailing, <laughs> yeah, Parasailing is destroy all enchantments. You get one life for each enchantment destroyed this way. Oh, yeah. I mean, more simply, I think Back to Nature is just destroy all enchantments at instant speed. Now, I don't see very many people running these cards, even though massive... It's, and I think it's because the flexibility isn't there, right? Um, I think you're right, and I think we don't want to hit our own enchantments too, but man, I gotta say, like... I don't like spot removal. Like, whenever I have spot removal with enchantments, Mm -hmm. like, let's say I've got a card that can exile an artifact or an enchantment, I'm just like, well, I don't know, man. I want to hit seven things with this, but I guess the worst one is this. (laughs) So maybe, like, is this a thing where we should be, like, removing the flexibility and adding the card advantage and adding the mass board, like, state removal? Again, I I think the trend that we're seeing here, now that we're breaking it down, is I want... Like, so far, I want at least one mass artifact removal. I want at least one mass enchantment removal. Um, And at the end of my removal package, I won't have room for spot of all of these. So my spot is going to have to be the flexible one. And these ones are going to have to be the mass ones. Or something like Bane of Progress comes in, fills the role of two of those cards. You get kind of best of both worlds with that guy, right? I mean, he's a pretty... I mean, that's why that card is widely played in Commander. That's why that card is so good, right? Um, yeah, if, huge card advantage. Yeah, definitely f- fits all the things you want. Uh, there's some other ones like it too, like uh, uh, Wave of Vitriol also causes um, you to get rid yeah. of it, it, it's it's a it's a wipe for enchantments, artifacts, and non basic lands actually. Um, but yeah, so so but I think the way that we end up doing it uh, mostly, from what I've seen, is that you lean towards that that flexibility, like we're talking about. Artifacts and enchantments obviously get hit. If you can include lands and planeswalkers in that, you're just you're just laughing. But but just talking about it here, like maybe there is some room for these these <laughs> video game fans will like it. Mass effects over uh, <laughs> over the, over some of these other cards we're kind of used to. It's interesting. I actually didn't think about that even going into this this very yeah. discussion. It's it's very interesting. Like I mean, artifacts and enchantments. The removal that deals with these things often deals with it together. Obviously, if you're running mono red, you're going to have a hard time with enchantments, but artifacts will be fine. But very frequently, if you're going to if you're able to remove enchantments, you're also able to remove artifacts. So we can probably lump those categories together. Yeah. Uh, as I said, I don't want more than a few spot removal cards and I want them to deal with anything I need because I can't have destroy all planeswalkers, destroy all enchantments, destroy all artifacts, destroy all lands. Like I can't I can't ha- I don't have room for all those. Right, and like you said, uh, it's a good point, actually. The color pie is going to be a big restriction there. Anyone who's played Rakdos knows uh, you're not touching enchantments with that deck. Uh, enchantments are just going to sit there for it against <laughs> yeah. you, which is yeah. bad. Uh, whereas green and white get to do whatever they want with that kind of stuff. They are the, they are the uh, colors that deal with both artifacts and enchantments really easily. We all know red can hit artifacts. Um, and blue can bounce permanence, I suppose. That's how they that's how they deal with it. So they yeah. can temporarily deal with stuff or set people back or whatever. Uh, yeah. Black is just SOL about in general, <laughs> right? Like about enchantments yeah. and artifacts. Black doesn't deal well with either of them. No. Bummer. Uh, but you know what? That's why we love this game. The color pie matters. Um uh, so yeah, I mean, it, what about uh, what about the next uh, permanent type here, Planeswalkers? Planeswalkers and the removal that deals with them. Um, creatures are obviously a form of removal for Planeswalkers because we can attack them. So it feels like it kind of makes sense that there aren't as many spot removal or even mass removal cards for Planeswalkers. Although recently they have been making a lot more of them. And uh, that's probably leaning towards the you know, your standard and your modern and that sort of stuff. But uh, because in Commander, Planeswalkers are always going to be more fragile just because there's more enemies, more ways to attack them, more ways to deal with them. Um, uh, but yeah, it's also uh, recently we've had that rule change of like if if something could hit a player or a creature, like it was like if it could hit a player, you could redirect it to a Planeswalker. Well, now it can just uh, target the Planeswalker directly, which has changed some cards significantly right there's some cards that did some incidental damage to a player like as they destroyed a creature for example 
well, that you could used to be able to hit a planeswalker with that, but now you can't anymore. Yeah, so in those ways, it's harder to deal with planeswalkers. Mm -hmm. But as you say, like, they have been giving us more tools to deal with planeswalkers, and they have been tuning down planeswalkers slightly. So, I mean, tell that to standard. Well, I mean, yeah, Teferi's Teferi's ridiculous (laughs) right now, but I mean, for the most part, they're they're getting better at it. Yeah. Uh, and, I mean, that just speaks to that, like, this is also a new permanent type. Like, Planeswalkers, Magic's 25 years old. Planeswalkers were not around for the first half of it or yeah. more. So there just aren't as many cards in the pool that have been designed to deal with this permanent type. Uh, green gets a pass sometimes because they often said non-land permanents. Mm-hmm. So if they invent a new kind of permanent, those will still be able to deal with them, True. whatever they are. Do do you include much removal for Planeswalkers in your decks, for example? Well, no, I, I don't include, like, I mean, if it says destroy a creature or Planeswalker, <clears throat> I would consider it. But mm-hmm. the problem is, like, as I said, like, you made a good point. Creatures do attack Planeswalkers. That's how I'm going to deal with a lot of them if possible. And I feel like in a multiplayer game, it's sometimes, it should, I feel like it's, not always, but it's usually pretty easy to get the table to turn on the Planeswalker. We can usually team up and be like, okay, we all got to work together and make sure that this thing doesn't ultimate. So I can knock it down by four. Can you knock it down the rest of the way? Okay, good. Yeah. And so I feel like I don't need a spell to do that because I can get the table's help. And that's actually the preferred way to do it anyway. Yeah. If I can get the table to work with me on something, that's way better than me having a card to do it. Because now I don't got to spend any actual card resource on it. You know what Planeswalker removal is? Flying. <laughs> Basically. That's what Planeswalker removal is, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, it's still nice to have it if you can get it once in a while. Uh, um sp- Speaking of mass, there aren't, there isn't a very much mass planeswalker removal. Actually, uh, there's the, only like there's a, there's a in Garrick's wake is one way to do it. I know that'll do it. And then can't you pick planeswalkers for that black white yeah, six CMC a massive one eviction or merciless eviction? merciless eviction? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're so bad with themes now. Actually, you're a thousand times better than I am. I'm terrible with themes. <laughs> now. Uh, finally, what do we have? Lands, lands, and removal. I think this is one of the more one of the most overlooked um, areas of removal for uh, commander. For some people, really focus on it, and if you're in a spiky meta, it is very important. It gets even more important because you know there's a lot of if you know spiky your metas have, tend to work with more expensive cards, and those more expensive cards tend to be lands, and they tend to be. Uh, very good, like, utility lands and things like that. Your Gaius Cradles, even, just stuff like making tons of mana and things like that. So, um, well, And then recently, too, the big resurgence of those Alzcanta flip cards that turn into utility lands, right? The As- now a, a lot more people have access to an equivalent of uh, Maze of Vith or mm-hmm. an equivalent, or just that whatever Conqueror's Galleon turns into is yeah. so powerful. Agreed, agreed. I think that land uh, removal is more important now than it's ever been in Commander. Mm-hmm. Because agreed. of because of those uh, Ixalan lands, um, there it's absolutely yeah, it's it's so important. We've got we've got more Gaia's cradles out there, you know. Uh, Growing rights of it, Lamox, and uh, what's the one? The Academy Academy Ruins? No, it's something else. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. It 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 is. Tolarian Academy. Tolarian Academy. It's Tolarian Academy, but I yeah. have the new name. Of it. It's that we have Tolarian Academies running around out there now. Like, it's it's you need to include land removal, and I'm I personally am always looking for one or two ways at least to to do it. Um, permanent removal is obviously one way. Uh, but one thing I'll say is that there's a lot of lands that have land removal, and we're always, obviously, we're all very aware of like, <clears throat> you know, wasteland. If you can, and and uh, what's it called? Uh, strip mine. Strip mine. If you can get those, those are those are the classics. Those are the you know slightly more expensive ones. Uh, but there are cheaper options out there uh, these days. Um, yeah, uh, they tend to like go up in price a little bit if they're if they're any kind of like efficient because modern really likes them. But you know, you can still find some reasonably priced ghost quarters. Uh, there's um, tectonic edge. Tectonic edge is one, yeah. And if you're in red, you can use that um, the one that came out the cycle in Dominaria, the the red land. Uh, oh yeah, memorial to war. Yes, there you go. So yeah, I mean, you can find it if it's out there, and 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 any kind of like spell effect you can get on the land is great. 
Um, and yeah. one thing I've noticed that people are not really super well not willing to do because of the way the cards work usually is uh they're they're probably not going to spend their their land destruction on your land on your land destruction if it's a land because yeah. then you can, first of <laughs> yeah. all because mostly you'll just do it and do it back to them um but uh but yeah and if they do it's like big deal yeah Oh, so I agree. Like uh, all those points, we don't run mass removal for lands. Generally speaking, that's kind of taboo. Uh, your meta may vary, but uh, generally speaking, you just got to deal with the spot removal, which makes it that much more important. Yeah, it's you know, it it would be really cool if there was a. This might even exist if there was a card that was like remove, like exile target land or destroy target land and each land with a uh, non basic land and each land with the same name as it. If you made it cost like, if you made it cost too much for competitive formats, but make it good for commander, like, and you can hit this guy's maze of Ith and this other guy's maze of Ith, or this guy's oh, yeah. guy's cradle and this other, you know, and the same one, right? Like that would be something, or like strive it, like it's like a yeah. five mana card, and then you can strive it for one extra or two extra or something like that. That'd be let cool. me strive it. Yeah, strive it. Why not? So, anyways, <laughs> that's the new hashtag for our show. Strive it. Why not? Uh, <laughs> but yeah uh in conclusion yeah uh so, so so we've said it in every category so far uh mass removal is going to be preferable to spot removal from a strict card advantage point of view but you have to have a couple of points of spot removal in strict cases uh, the main of which is when you don't want to destroy all of your stuff but you need to get rid of one thing but we do need room for some spot removal, so we want that spot removal to be as flexible as possible. Um, that is the most important trait in our spot removal is flexibility. Uh, I would say after that, f efficiency. Yeah, and the colors that are going to lean you towards that are definitely always going to be green and white for this type of thing. Even green and white are, uh, even green is like, some of the best at land removal also oddly enough red yeah. although is good at that and black has a couple things that can do that as well uh that's generally spread out pretty good again except for blue um uh but leaning towards your selesnias your orzovs can just deal with any permanence for the most part uh so really white is is a color that's really powerful when it comes to this which is so interesting when you hear um, you know, hear, hearing it as, be, uh, you know, being called like not a good color and like bringing down win percentages and stuff like from the command zone stats episode, for example. Um, uh, I mean, it's a great support color, but you know, yeah, who, who knows? knows? Who knows? Right. Uh, yeah. And then also like know your meta, like if yeah. you have the luxury of playing in a regular meta you can figure out exactly how to tune your removal packages. Maybe you don't really need to worry about enchantments because only one person has one. And ooh, it, like... ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> always worry about enchantments. Always, but like, but but you don't like. I mean, like our meta, a lot of the decks don't have any planeswalkers in them. So True. that's another reason I don't run a lot of Planeswalker removal because, like, I usually don't see them. <laughs> we have one Super Friends deck, and when it comes out, everyone just attacks it until i don't know until they're all dead until they're all dead but then i, I want to say that's true but then it's not but but that's because uh super friends decks are the are like kind of a, a interesting way to protect planeswalkers oddly enough because when there's Too so many, many of them out it's just like yeah. well like you kind of get like burnt out on doing that you're like well i don't want to keep attacking them who cares i don't know anyway yeah uh but that's uh that's probably a topic for another episode um so yeah, the, what what type of remover are you guys playing in your decks? Let us know in the comments. Let us know uh, if you're if you're playing any effects like that just destroy all enchantments, for example. Has that become something that's popped up as as uh, being important in your meta, or if you think in commander as a whole? Like I've been eyeing those destroy all enchantment cards for a while now. Oh man, I started about, putting. You know whether or not it's worth it's worth running in some decks. I'll run it back to basics in a few decks. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it always depends on how many enchantments I have, too. Like, like is my deck huge on enchantments? Then I'm not going to. But, again, that's why Vandal Blast is so good, because you get to run all the artifacts you want, and you don't care. That, that doesn't... I don't know if that exists for enchantments. I'm going to see if I can find that. Back to nature. 
Back to nature. I'm sorry. Back yeah, to right. basics back to, is something. Back stupid. to basics is a blue thing that doesn't let lands on tap or something. Right, um, right, right. Very different. But yeah, back to nature. One and a one and a green for the instant. Destroy one and a green. Destroy all enchantments. Instant speed. It can't be beat. Yeah, it's interesting. It yeah, it really is. So you know, let us know what you guys are thinking. Let us know what you guys are running. Um, do you have some secret tech? Some secret planeswalker removal? Some secret. You know, some secret land destruction people aren't really running these days or they don't know about. Let us know and, uh, you know, maybe we'll talk about it next time. Um, but, yeah, otherwise we'll see you guys next week. Remember to hit subscribe if you're liking the videos. See ya. Bye. Big thanks to all our patrons who make these episodes possible. Yeah, and if you want to check out more comedy videos, check out our Bruise News playlist. Make sure you follow us on Twitch TV to see when we play live. If you want to chat with us, head over to Twitter. We're at Commander's Brew. And please hit subscribe to Ding the Bell and find out when we got new stuff coming out.